All right, we have uh, Grant High School legendary coach Mark Cotton, and uh, this spring you hosted a reunion of members of the 1963 and 1964 cross country teams. Um, uh, and now 60 years have passed. What what did it mean to you to have uh, the members of this team come back and share some time with them this spring? It was it was great. Uh, it made me realize more than I ever had before what a talented group they were, both as runners. There were like four state champions there. Uh, another city champion. I have to realize how talented they were. And then when I talked to them about what they had done, again, that uh, just impressed me with what adults they had become. You know, my son Greg, who goes after me, always told his runners, I would like to interview 10 years from now, because right now you're sort of wild men, but 10 years from now, you'll be something. And uh, 60 years later, they really were. Uh, just a great bunch of people, all of them very successful. The one that impressed me the most, because I hadn't even heard from him, was Mike Jones. All I had been told about Mike was that he was not very healthy or something. Well, he was very healthy and <clears throat> and was a major in the Army, retired, and was helping other retired veterans uh, navigate all the stuff they had to navigate, so I really enjoyed seeing him. He was a real surprise to me, but Ron and Hal, I had been very close to, and, and Terry and Steve I'd seen a lot uh, over the years. But uh, the whole thing was was wonderful. Um, 63 team won, most I think everyone was, most of them were back for 64, right? When that team scored 35 points, raw score, uh, one of the best uh, scores in state history even today. Um, and had what four Pacific Coast, like Pac 12, Pac 8, Pac 8, 10, 12, however you want to say it, uh, future runners on that team. One of the maybe one of the best teams in America at that time. Um, what, what do you remember the most about the state meets in 63 and 64? They were, they were at Willamette University at that yes, time, they right? They were both at Willamette. What do you remember the most about those? Uh, celebrate celebrations and and watching those guys run well these guys in my first year at Grant 62 uh, taught me a lot about the things that Denny Sullivan had done with them and they ran pretty well in 62 although we lost a meet to South Salem up at Wilson but uh, at state our guys in 62 were second to South Salem and that really was surprising to me so I thought we had a good chance the next year and then in 63 uh, we won that and by about 50 points I think and uh, South Salem was not in it they were second or third that year but uh, we had uh, Jim Harrison, who was a holdover from the year, two years before, and Jim filled our top five. Steve was not out in 62, but he was out in 63, I think. So they won the state championship uh, due to uh, Jim still being there and for Steve being added to us. Then the next year, I thought, we had a real good chance. We had a great season. And uh, I've told this many times, but I was standing on the field with my clipboard uh, watching our guys run when I thought we, we would do it. So I was checking them off as they came in. Ron came in first. Hal came in fourth. Steve came in seventh. Terry came in ninth. 
And I thought, well, I've got to wait for, see who's number five. And all of a sudden here was Mike Jones in 14. I just threw the clipboard down on the grass <laughs> because it wasn't close whatsoever. You know, and Mike had been 16th in the city meet and uh, he was running against most of the same guys plus the rest of the state. And he was very nervous before the race and I asked Jim Harrison who had come to watch the meet to try to calm him down and get him ready. I don't know what Jim said to him, but it was the right thing because Mike on the, in the city had been a minute behind Ron. That state he was about 30 seconds behind Ron, so mm -hmm. there was no contest. And they were great. I mean, besides four of them going to Pac-12 schools, Ron was state champ in the mile, had placed at state in the half mile. Hal was state champ in the two mile. Uh, Steve was state champ in cross country the next year. Mm -hmm. Terry <coughs> Shukart was city champ in the 800. And <coughs> then Mike Jones showed some vers versatility as seen next year, his senior year, when he ran on the 880 relay team, which one state and is only one tenth behind the fastest team that Oregon's ever had, which was our team the year before. Mm -hmm. So, talent, I just, unbelievable how much they taught me. You were um, still a young guy back then. Well, yeah, I was young, but my <clears throat> record of uh, being a cross country coach. At Hermeson, I was a football coach. I was mm -hmm. line coach in football, and the kids in Hermeson, some of them came to me one morning and said, we'd like to run some cross country. And I said, well, I can only coach you at 6.30 in the morning. They said, we'll see you tomorrow morning. Mm. And I got seven kids, and on weekends, we'd get in the car. I had a van, a station wagon. We'd go to Pendleton or Baker or somewhere and have a cross country meet. but. Talent? No, they weren't very talented. But that was the only, you know, I didn't know what to do with these guys when there was a hundred of them at Grant. I mean, it was yeah surrealistic to me. Competitive. And I was so, luck so lucky to be in that situation. I, I was first, I was surprised to be at Grant. I'd never applied to Grant. They had contacted me, to, and I don't know why, but anyway, I, didn't know that. I was very fortunate, extremely fortunate, and Denny Sullivan had made a core of these kids that the one thing that we did the most that they taught me that Denny did was the figure eights, and I probably changed them over the years a little bit, but I, I thought that was a real integral part of our workouts over the years. Mm. So, I just feel terribly fortunate that they were all there at one time. Mm -hmm. I've had some other good runners, but never five yeah. that good. It was a huge high school. There was, in my class alone, our class alone, there were over 900 kids. And in the school, the four-year school, there were 3,000 kids, so it was huge. And the way that you, you learned to handle that was that you, you, know, you gravitated towards your interests and um, you met other kids that had similar interests. Um, I, had, uh, the, you know, I went out for cross-country my freshman year to get in shape for basketball. I was a basketball player. I didn't know anything about running. But I wanted to be in shape for basketball, so out I went um, and enjoyed running and some of the kids on the team. And then I had to decide, am I going to play baseball or am I going to run track? And I decided on track, uh, well, because Denny Sullivan gave me a chance. But by that time, um, you know, a lot of the kids that I knew and liked in school were also coming out. And so really running for me became part of my social life all through high school. 
it was we not only worked out after school and went to meets we did things on the weekends together you know we went to dances together um you know and we were we did healthy things because you know that was uh we didn't want to jeopardize any of the conditioning or any um, but it was a great group of, and we ran that way you could tell that we worked out together we hung out together and we participated and competed together and that's what i really have the most memory of it wasn't the outside events that were going on you know that was clearly a uh you know uh quite a time of change but for me um it just felt uh, that that was the right group to be with he cared about every person on the team, whether you were in the top placers or whether or not you were just gutted it out and came to practice every day. Yeah, that's me. Every that's person me. was just as important as everybody else. And people picked up on that. I mean, you know, felt, oh, you know, I'm not in the top five, but, you know, coach cares. He knows what I'm doing. And that always stuck with me that he had a rapport with the the kids that didn't have as much talent, perhaps, as the kids that did. And that always was a great life lesson for me. Um, and um, that was, and I, I still know people today that had him as a teacher, never had him as a coach, had him as in the classroom and said, you know, uh, you know, Mr. Cotton always cared about me. You know, he always, he knew what I, who I was and, and encouraged me to be better. And, you know, I didn't have anything to do with cross country or track. That had to do with a person and a teacher that got, you know, communicated with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. What was the city scene for distance running and cross country like in the early 60s? Was it Grant and a huge gap to everyone else in the city or was it competitive? And was it like, you know, I, I would say it wasn't real competitive. Uh, there were good runners from other schools, but not uh, a collective bunch of, of runners. And so for that reason, we usually came out on top when, when we were running. Because you had uh, the there, biggest team. and right. right. And there were individuals that were quite good that, that I remember, uh, and some of whom I felt like I was friends with. Uh, just They just went to different schools. Uh, Lincoln had good runners. Cleveland had good runners. So did Marshall, Terry Kiss. Uh, yeah, Marshall had a state champion in cross country. And uh, in fact, uh, Marshall, Grant, uh, Wilson at the time, uh, one year we got first, second, and third in the state meeting. 64. 1964, mm -hmm. first, second, and third. So the, the, the city was, was pretty strong, but uh, the teams weren't quite as strong as we were in those days. So. All right. Uh... You attended Fossil High School, which I'm not sure a lot of people know about. It's the same school that Bill Bowerman I attended came Fossil to. Grade School. Grade I School. Echo High School. Echo High School. Okay, but you lived you lived for a while in Fo in the town of Fossil. I lived in the town of Fossil for three years. Yeah. Okay. Um, how much did you look up to Coach Bowerman, and how much did you feel like you learned from him, having either whether it was in you know personally or at clinics and things? How influential was he for you and other high school running coaches at that time? Well, I think his method of training affected us all. I'm still a, a disciple of the hard, easy uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, maybe hard, Tuesday, Thursday, weekends lighter. and. It's partly what kind of workouts you have, and the other side is intensity. On the easy days, you can still run 10 miles, but you don't have to be intense. Whereas if it's a hard day, you're supposed to go after it. But still, you learn to be relaxed while you're intense. And that's a... Mm -hmm. That's a... It's a Bowerman. Hard to do, but Bowerman is the first coach that I ran into that emphasized the hard, easy workouts. And I still think it's the way to go because your body can't go bang, 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 bang. Mm -hmm. It needs that rest. rest in between. And that rest might be Hal's morning five mile run that he's still doing. <laughs> uh, I think it 
it's keeping him in shape mm -hmm. and it's keeping him healthy but i don't he's not he's not competing now but he still loves the running yeah um you were someone who was equipped to coach decathletes like you could coach any event throws sprints hurdles everything how much when you got to grant or even i guess maybe it goes back to hermiston but how eager were you to coach cross country versus track like track was track was the thing right like cross country was something you just did like how much did you care about cross country in those earlier days i liked cross country because i was coaching everybody to do the same thing you know it was a it was a more of a social thing like they've said that we were all out there with one purpose you know we weren't riding off in five different directions yeah sometimes in track i stood out in the middle of the field and there was people doing all kinds of things and i say to myself what am i supposed to do now you know <laughs> somebody out here needs help who do i go to first we had some great brother combinations at that time there was the jacksons the buyers and the shoe carts and you know and i know one of south eugene's great claims to fame is they had brothers um and um that sucked in more people and we, we just had a really good period at Grant where we were getting good families, uh, kids from good families out running. And that brought in other people, too, that saw that we were running and they thought, okay, if they can do it, we can do it. And so it kind of fed on itself. But I was always impressed that the families played a big part of it, really. Yeah, right. With Chesney's is his one. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the, one of the big families in South Eugene. Yeah. Um, uh, Mark, the other coaches that that were, uh, you know, I'm thinking of uh, Coach Abraham, Abraham, Coach Fransky, uh, others that were peers of yours in the 60s and 70s. What was it like? Uh, I mean, you had meetings, I'm sure, together, figure out coach of the year, like honors and things like that. What, what were those men like? They were great guys. They were both products of Denny Sullivan. Mm. John Abraham ran at Grant. Uh, Coach Fransky ran at Grant, uh, was a hurdler. Abraham was a sprinter. See champ, uh, right? We had great rapport between us. I really enjoyed competing against them. But they they were a tough crew to compete against, too. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I thought there was some, we had some good coaches in Portland. Some really. Who else besides, well, I guess Dave Bailey came along later at Lincoln. Dave okay. Bailey came along. Uh, 40, the good, years one of the best cross country uh, coaches when these guys were in school was Don Francine. At Marshall. At Marshall. Mm. Yeah. Great big guy. I'd like to ask you about what Oregon High School cross country kind of looked like, especially in Portland, in the early 60s. Um, you know, it was, you know, there was, again, with Jim Grella had come up already. Bill Dellinger was, had made Olympic teams by then. I mean, I think track and field was, had, Oregon was starting to become a little bit still, you know, well-known uh, as a hotbed in, in the United States and not necessarily, you know, Grant at, at that point yet or anything like that. But what, who was influential or who was inspirational that you think either for either you as a coach or some of the guys on the team? I don't know. Things had just changed a little bit. When I was in college in 52, our distance people might come out and jog two or three miles if they were lucky and then run a meet, you know, in a five minute mile, even at the small college level, wasn't too bad. And it wasn't until about the time that Burleson and Grella were running that people got into interval training and stuff and tough workouts. And uh, I know Burleson loved to take people out and get them lost in the woods. Uh, I think those guys, Burleson, Grella, Dubner was a name, uh, they were influential to me that they were doing this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, 
And other, their coaches would tell you, or was there a, a little bit of a wall of uh, you couldn't get to the information? I could get the information if I talked to the right people. Yeah. And I, I do think I went to probably more clinics and talked to more coaches than most coaches do. A lot of coaches, if they had a day off, they wouldn't go to a clinic. Well, I would go to a clinic if I could find one. But uh, I think when these guys were in school was about the time that running really became popular. And it was made popular by a few years earlier, Burroughs and Grilla, mm -hmm. uh, Dubner, and so forth. Uh, yeah. So I would say they inspired me as much as anybody. But up in Hermiston, anybody surprised, uh, inspired us. You know, we, I would bring a carload of kids down to the indoor meet in Portland because they never saw a thing like that. So the indoor meet was already going by the early 60s, mm -hmm. the Oregon Invitational? Mm -hmm. How far back does that go? I don't know. It went back at least to 60. And I, about 1960, I think, when it brought the first, first carload of guys to... And there were all comers meets going on about then, too. Yeah. There's a guy out in Malala who uh, I see now that I brought down. He told me I brought him down to Port on you for all comers meets. He was a pole holder. What did that mean to you to go up to Columbia River and, and have a big invitational up there? And, and Well, it was a way to kind of gauge where you stood, you know. Um, for me, their key top runner was Roscoe Devine. And Roscoe and I raced in that race, um, you know, it was probably my hardest race and I lost that race. Um, but our team, um, our team beat them. Um, and so we knew, knew, and then two weeks later we won the state cross country in Oregon, but we knew that we beat Washington's best team as well uh, in a head to head meet. And, you know, so I, you know, I felt that that gave us good reason to believe that we were the best team in the Northwest. And that was Columbia River? That was Columbia River. Was it a big, like, was there like a lot, like, was it a big meet, like 30 team kind no, of? No, it was just three teams. Oh, just three teams. And it was at Columbia River, so it was, a pro, it was yeah. there on their course, yeah. which hurt me. But I learned one valuable lesson is that when we hit the track, he was on the inside and I was on the outside. And just that difference of running in the outside was the difference in the race. And I, what I learned from that was if you're going to finish on the track, get the rail, get on the inside. I'm sure Coach Cotton reminded you of that yeah, as soon I'm as sure. you were done, right? Uh, but <laughs> our team really performed well, and that, that felt good at that meet. And was that in 63 or 64? That was 64. It was two, it was two weeks before the state meet. Okay. It's still less than... 10 years since Roger Bannister, right? So is the, was the mile like the marquee thing even back then? Like did a lot of kids, okay, cross country is great, but I'm just training for the mile in the spring. Like was that, was the mile still regarded as like, uh, you know, the, that's, that's, it was, that's it how was you, that's your identity. Roger Bannister and the people that followed him made the mile popular. Then everybody thought, if we can break four minutes, we're good. Right. And people started breaking it. There was Jim Ryan. Jim oh, yeah. Ryan right. was, uh, you know, was a person that I looked up to and followed his career. And a lot of that was the mile, mm -hmm. uh, you know, being a, uh, but yeah. Wow, what a walk through memory lane here. Um, was Jerry Lindgren someone that was seemed like really far away or someone that feel like, I can kind of keep tabs of what he did this week or well, last week. He was weekend. a year class ahead of us. Yeah. And I was recruited at Washington State and I went up to Pullman um, to look at the school and Jerry Lingren was there. And we went out running together. Jerry Lingren and I went with a couple of other recruits from high schools that were there. And I remember that. And he was a character, um, he was a super character. But he was well suited for Washington State. I mean, there's not much there. You know, there's a lot of, you know, fields and stuff, and he'd just go out and run and run and run. Um, but, yeah, Jerry Lindgren was something. And actually, in the race that Roscoe and I ran, we bettered Jerry Lingan's time um, for that course. And I remember thinking, well, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, 
I still lost. <laughs> I want to ask you a little bit about uh, uh, the places that you ran, you know. Again, when you think about cross country, you've got trails and, and uh, you know, paths. You guys are running on sidewalk. Grant's, Grant's always training on sidewalks, uh, cement a lot, a lot of times. Did, I mean, it, um, what were some of your favorite places to run, whether you're just doing it with Steve or with the team? Well, Hal and I used to run on the weekends, too. Oh, okay. What were some of your favorite places to run back when you were in high school? Well, we ran to Rocky Butte an awful lot. Yeah. And we had a river run that we would go out 33rd Drive, which we wouldn't do today, uh, and go Marine up to 138th or 148th and kind of come back around Rocky Butte. And I think so would that be like a... That'd be an hour plus run, right? Yeah, you know, it was probably about 12 to 13, 14 miles. But we didn't do that all the time. But Rocky Butte, we did fairly often. Yeah. And uh, just running around the neighborhoods and, and track workouts. And the figure eights that Mark mentioned were a big part of our workout in those days. Mm -hmm. and, and a good part, too, actually. Lower Horse Park. We'd run over to Lower Horse Park from Grant. And that was a nice place to run. And boy, you could tell the difference. When you got off of the sidewalks, and onto the trails, and it was definitely kinder to your legs. It wasn't until later that we really discovered Forest Park, and that mm -hmm. you could go over there and run on the weekends, and man, it was so much kinder to your legs when you were running on the trails than all that cement. But um, yeah, um, we made up some of our own runs too. Um, what were some of the other ones that I can remember we went to? Well, was, there a, was there a... Was there a... Hill. Yeah, we ran up the Fern Hill, Hill a lot, the, yeah. The old uh, Adams High School. What so. was the favorite race race course in the city back then? Was there a cross-country course that was a favorite to run I on? I love Grant, because yeah. we knew it, you know. Yeah. The hardest was Wilson. Wilson, that hill, so Wilson yeah. was really right. tough. Yeah. Um, and that's what Mike Jones credited his improvement from city to state was... The city meet was at Wilson, and the state meet was at Willamette, and he said the course was just Easier. so much better for him. Yeah, every people vary on various courses, but sure. Um, yeah, Fern Hill. We used to run up to Fern Hill a lot. So, would twelve to fourteen miles be the longest run that you would do? Well, I don't think it was any longer than that. Yeah, um, I think it was more like ten or twelve. Was the river? loop that we made was probably the longest one but so you you come to grant you have instant success with cross country winning titles in 63 64 the the track team starts winning titles as well in the 70s did some of the i mean the rise of south eugene happened they started winning everything adams high school opened was that something that hurt the competitiveness a little bit of of Grant to to have that another school open and take part of the neighborhood away. Well, it hurt a little bit in terms of Rick Eatman. <laughs> Rick Rick yeah, Eatman right. was at Grant his freshman year, and he ran on a in the state meet in both the two hundred and the eight hundred relay as a freshman, mm -hmm. and then he went to. Adams the next year, if we'd have had him, we'd have won probably another, but we won the 70 state championship when he was at Adams and they hoped that they would beat us because they had good sprinters and long jumpers, but they didn't. But uh, yes, Adams opening did take some kids Siphoned away. Siphoned off some. It took some kids away from us and it made, Grant went from 2,500 students down to 1,800 real fast. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, there was a long gap between 1970 and 1988. And right. you were, you know, you were doing great things for every kid who went through the school. But the championships, you know, were harder to get come by, it seems like, right? Well, part of it was due to the s smaller student body. We mm -hmm. got down as low as 15, 1,600. Mm -hmm. Part of it was due to adding girls' sports uh, and soccer. Yeah. Uh, we had to adjust to that. Adjusting to the girls' program was difficult. Uh, they had to learn to compete rather than 
be social. Mm -hmm. Although I, uh, I think it's a feather in your cap that the first what? the first girls state championship in cross country was yours. We won the first championship. And yeah. Those girls were a handful, but they had talent. Uh, the Elaine Pond, who won the mm -hmm. state cross country championship, also won the state mile that year. Yeah. And then her senior year, she didn't do well. She had a bleeding ulcer, and which kept her out of sports her senior year. I mean, in the seventies, I think a lot of the, you know, the suburbs rose up a bit. You know, population and all mm -hmm. that stuff. So your sunsets and things like that that were a little bit more irrelevant in the 60s were suddenly the the big dogs in the 70s. We, we could always complain if we wanted to about the kids that were taken out of Grant area by Benson, Jesuit, and Central Catholic. Mm -hmm. You know, there were some really good track girls lived a block from Grant High School that went to Benson, for example. Mm -hmm. So we could use that yeah. excuse, but yeah. we had to coach who we had. Exactly. And... Okay, Hal. So you're part of the one of the branches on the cotton coaching tree, <laughs> having coached at Wilson many years. Uh, and and um, uh, how influential was Mark in you becoming a coach? Well, <clears throat> probably the number one reason. And uh, the reason is that... Uh, when I was participating in cross country and track, I looked at Mark and he was a good leader, but I looked at him and it seemed like he was having fun. And uh, as I watched him and as I got closer to going to college, I thought, ah, oh, maybe I'd like to do something like that someday. Not really thinking I would, but uh, thinking that maybe that would be fun to do. Mm -hmm. He's having fun on his job. <clears throat> and yeah. so uh, after my college experience, uh, I hadn't yet graduated with a teaching certificate, and, and uh, I went ahead and, and uh, went back for another year and uh, got my teaching certificate and got my first job at Milwaukee High School and continued to stay in touch with Mark and learned a lot from Mark when I was coaching uh, early on through coaching clinics that he was putting on and just from being around him <laughs> was mm -hmm. a, uh, a good thing. And uh, like I said, I have a lot of respect for what Mark did for me and showing me the way, the way for me. And um, as you said, uh, a lot of coaches out of our era, I, I haven't counted them up, but I'd say five or six, uh, including Ron, Ron's brother, Steve, who I don't know we've acknowledged enough, but he, he coached for a number of years uh, as an assistant coach, as kind of in the background, but we had a lot of uh, good coaches that came from Grant High School, and uh, uh, that's a tribute to Mark. Mm -hmm.